another good, good morning, time to go Got that smile upon my face Cause there's excitement in the chase This I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride And find myself I am alive And I soar Still I run towards the wind And let the challenge draw me in Cause I want more Hi, I'm Russ Rutan, and welcome to the all-new season of Flip Side of America, where we will continue to find and show you out of the way unique destinations where only we dare to go and give you the opportunity to join us. Now, many of these locations are locations that allow you the opportunity to either go there for a day, take a picnic. Many of the locations include camping, whether it's with a tent, RV, or a trailer. Some offer rental locations, such as beach home houses, or mountain homes, or some other locations. So whether you decide to go camping or to rent a home, that's where rentfunusa.com comes into play because this is what we offer we offer the opportunity for you to rent an RV a trailer also we have some great discounts on vacation homes we also have just great uh, discounts on vacations uh, whether you plan on staying in a hotel or whether you plan on flying or renting a car all that is available to you at rentfunusa.com that's rentfunusa.com now don't forget in addition to looking at these kind of locations we dare to look at haunted locations as well now whether you believe in ghosts or you don't believe in ghosts when it comes to haunted locations these are areas which are known to have some tremendous ghost stories and that's really the part that we find most fascinating now some people once again they just don't believe in ghosts that's okay because that makes it great for me because you know me I'm a big chicken that's why we don't shoot the haunted locations at night. Why? That's not going to work with Russ. Yes, I am afraid of about everything, including my own shadow. But I can go into these locations. We can talk to you about it because it's not just the ghosts. I leave the ghosts and the ghosts up to you. Me, my job is just to give you a good ghost story. That's what I think is the most important thing about these locations. It's not just the fact that it is a location, but that location has a really good ghost story with it. Next, don't forget UFOs. Yes, we do love our UFOs. Why? Well, number one, they're in the news, and we've had some pretty credible sightings of UFOs by uh, some people flying planes and other things, uh, military people who are seeing UFOs. On top of that, we do have some politicians now who claim that they have been abducted by UFOs. Now, whether you've seen a UFO, been abducted by a UFO, talked to UFOs, or whatever it is that you want to do with a UFO, we're going to tell you where UFOs have been seen most recently, especially most recently near us. In case you wanted to go check it out and see if you don't see a UFO, I don't know if they're little green men or not or what they actually look like because personally I've never been abducted that I know of but I don't know I might have a chip planted in my head or something I next don't forget this is a watch and win show watch and win you say yes watch this show 
and we'll give you the chance to win some great prizes. As the show goes on, we have some marvelous prizes to give away. We've already given away tons of coupons. Uh, we've given away coffee mugs, t-shirts, and we've got a lot more coming. Some unique and some really different. But we always give you the opportunity, the viewer, to watch the show and to win some prizes just for watching. We're going to tell you a little bit later how to watch and win. But we'll be right back with our first location after this. Our first location that we're going to is McClellanville. Now McClellanville is a small fishing, well, really shrimping town north of Charleston. It's between Charleston and Myrtle Beach. It's a great little destination location in the sense that they've got a lot of marvelous restaurants. They do have some shopping, but the best part about it is, is just going and hanging out in McClellanville. If you go there, you'll see what we're talking about. And to start with, well, we cannot tell a lie, our first location is Hampton Plantation, outside of McClellanville. Now, the story about the Hampton Plantation is George Washington slept there. Now, many of you who've been up and down the East Coast know that almost everybody has signs at wherever they stop at that George Washington slept there. Well. The Hampton Plantation, which there's another one that's kind of close, but it's clear down in Beaufort, and we'll talk to about that one. It's Hampton, and this is Hampton, and this location, we do have proof that George Washington really did sleep here. Hey Mark, so where did you bring us? So, for the record, I wasn't driving, you were. Well, yeah, but we're, so? <laughs> well, now we're at, we are now at Hampton Plantation, which is just outside of McClellanville, South Carolina. And for those of you that don't know where it is, it's located between Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and Georgetown, South Carolina, right on the coast. And my understanding is there's some famous people from here. There are a couple famous people from McClellanville. We're going to go over all that today because we have a lot of great spots to visit. And when you see it, I'm sure you're going to want to come visit this great little town. And there's a guy here who's a poet. Well, and he yeah. knew it. Ar I didn't say it. Archib Archibald Rutledge. Oh my gosh, I screwed it up. Archibald Rutledge was uh, the first poet laureate. And so this was his home. And we're going to, again, cover all that today. Located outside of McClellanville, just north of Charleston, is the Hampton Plantation, which is just under 300 acres of land located on the banks of the Hampton Creek, which is a tributary of the Santee River. This land was formerly part of the Siwi Indian tribe. The plantation obviously was once a very large agricultural center, but no longer. Today, it's pretty much been reverted back to its natural wooded and swampy conditions. For over 150 years, the plantation raked in big bucks. When we say big bucks, most people immediately assume that it was cotton. No, in Carolina, it was known as Carolina gold. What's Carolina gold, you ask? Rice. Rice in the South Carolina area was king. The rice fields in South Carolina were pretty much created by African slaves, known as highly successful rice planters. Off the profits of rice, they obviously built grand and beautiful homes like the Hampton Plantation. The Hampton Plantation was begun in 1735 and ended roughly around 1790 to 1791 when it got finished. 
This plantation was the home of many prominent people, including the Orries, Pinckneys, and the Rutledge families. Even today, visitors can still explore a dozen rooms in the three-story Georgian-style house and look inside the plaster walls that have been opened to reveal the structure's framework. Out back, behind the mansion, still stands the kitchen house, which was built in the late 1800s. Slaves were assigned duties to deliver three meals a day there to this big house and all the workers. At the height of the rice plantation in Hampton Plantation, some 340 slaves worked on the property. Many did continue to live on the plantation long after rice was no longer a profitable crop. And there are still remnants of the slaves' houses, as a chimney that was part of the house built by slave descendants still remain. One of the great parts about Hampton Plantation is that there are many trails and they're well marked and they will take you all through the plantation. You will still see many features including impounds, dikes, all are created for the production of rice. At one time, they estimate there was over 25 rice fields that once stretched across the land as far as the eye could see. The house and this plantation have a rich, revolutionary history. The original core of the house was built in 1735 and was a central hall, two-story structure. The property was acquired in 1757 by Daniel Ory, who greatly expanded the building, adding a two-story ballroom on one side and a master bedroom suite on the other. The reason he did this was to ensure the symmetry of appearance. After the Orries came along, their later owners, from the Pinckney and Rutledge families, were all from politically and economically prominent South Carolina families. However, the last private owner of the property was a gentleman by the name of Archibald Rutledge. He was the state's first poet laureate. Included with the revolutionary history is the stories that go with it including the fact that in 1780, the British captured Charleston and stated that any man bearing arms against them would be treated as a traitor. What they did was they searched the Hampton Plantation a number of times. During the search, one of the times, the British were looking for our famous Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, who had stopped off at the Hampton to get some food. While the food was being prepared, he fell asleep, and the British came riding up. Mr. Ory, his friend, instructed Marion to swim across the creek and hide out in the rice fields. Marion escaped the house and was searched, but nothing was taken or destroyed. However, the next time they did do a search, the British were looking for Daniel Ory and Major Thomas Pinckney. Major Pinckney escapes but Ori was made to surrender and pledge his loyalty to the British. Well, he did so in order to protect his family and property, but the house was thoroughly plundered, but no buildings were burned. In 1782, the British Parliament voted to end the war and establish peace, which was nice because that allowed this house to stay and continue and the plantation to continue. Of course, being a house in the Revolutionary War, you constantly have the stories of George Washington. George Washington slept here. Well, there's a story that George Washington did sleep at the Hampton Plantation. As a matter of fact, there was this big, beautiful oak tree outside the Hampton Plantation that George Washington fell in love with. And when it comes to chopping down the cherry tree, we don't know if that story was true, but we do know that this story supposedly is true just as much as that story, that he liked this tree so much, he saved the oak tree. And that oak tree is still the predominant oak tree right outside of the plantation home. So the next time you're there, know that George Washington slept there and we don't know if he chopped down a cherry tree or not, but we do know he didn't chop down the oak tree. As you can see, the plantation 
has a number of trails, very well marked, giving you the ability to go through and see the history for yourself. And one of the best parts about this plantation is it's a very nice day trip, a great place to go have a picnic, take something along with you to have dinner, and just spend a good day there. I would recommend that if you come to Hampton Plantation, you do bring your camera because it is awesome. And I also recommend that you do plan on having a little bit of time there. There are many volunteers that know about the history and are happy to assist you to let you know all the things to look at. The Hampton Plantation is not only an agricultural wonder, yes, it's another flip side of America treasure. Next, we'll go into town. We're gonna go into McClellanville Take a little quick look around in McClellanville when we get back. Are you one of those people who would like to be on TV? Hold on, I've got an offer for you. We're looking for Flip Side of America people. If you want to send us a little comment about the show, you think you have an idea for the show, or you would even like to do a segment of the show, you have a location you think would be great for Flip Side of America, you have seen a UFO, uh, maybe you have seen a ghost, and you would like to tell us all about it. You know, we're not afraid, you can send in a video. You can send us a video, you can link it to a YouTube site or whatever you wish to do, and if we like that video, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put you on TV, and you'll also win a prize. So get those cameras rolling. We're not America's Funniest Home Videos. We're America's Most Interesting Videos. Here we are at historic McClellanville, and I'm here with Mark. Mark, tell us a little bit about McClellanville. All right, well, McClellanville is nestled between Mount Pleasant and Georgetown, South Carolina. It's about a thousand people, so it's a quaint little town. There's a couple pretty specific industries, and as you can tell from behind me, shrimping is one of the biggest industries that they have here. And every year during the first weekend of May, they have the Low Country Shrimp Festival. And this little town uh, explodes to a couple thousand, maybe 10, 15,000 people, and uh, they enjoy all the local shrimping, uh, oyster, and fishing industry here in town. And trust me, I love the shrimp, the oysters, and the fish. There isn't anything, I, I, I'm, I'm a seafood lover. Well then there's a little restaurant downtown that serves all that stuff, and we're gonna go see that on the way out. It'll take about two seconds, but this is a great town, you're gonna love it. I highly encourage everybody to come by and bring the family, because there's a lot of stuff to do here. Here we are in historic McClellanville. And one of the things about being in historic McClellanville is the fact that we are next to an historically haunted church. This is the Bethel AME Church in McClellanville, and there is no one who won't tell you that this church is not haunted, because it is. If this church doesn't scare you, nothing will. Well, welcome to McClellanville, South Carolina. A small, sleepy fishing town just north of Charleston, best known for shrimping, the home of many a church and churchgoers. 
But the one church we want to look at is not just noted for it being a church, but for it being a haunted church. Yes, the Bethel AME Church in McClellanville, the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church is an historic church located on Drayton Street in McClellanville. This church was built around 1872 and is a one-story, rectangular-framed, vernacular, Gothic Revival church that has a permeated gable front roof that supports a square base steeple. That's a lot of big words. Simply means it looks old and spooky. Of course, on this property, too, is a cemetery. To top it off, this church is actually registered in the National Register of Historic Places. So when we look at hauntings, we find that we definitely fit most of the criteria you would need to have ghosts. Number one, dead people. Dead people in the area, we've got that graveyard. You've got a spooky looking location. An old abandoned church. What more could you ask for? The great part about this church is there are more than enough stories, more than enough people who have had all kinds of ghostly activities happen while they've been visiting this church. As for me, I chose to visit it during the day, which makes it a lot less spooky. I had no heart for going to this church during the evening or night hours. This church has quite a history behind it, as you can tell just by simply walking around and looking at the headstones in the graveyard, which of course brings us to the point that the graveyard itself is even haunted. There are many stories of people who have seen ghosts wandering through the graveyard or stopping at a particular headstone. We also have many stories of ghosts being seen within the church, many looking for other parishioners or someone they had lost. We've even had ghost stories about a pastor or two still trying to give that almighty sermon, but yet dead as a doornail. Now, whether you believe in ghosts or not, I will guarantee you this, if you go there, you will find that often there's sounds that you hear coming out of that church that are not normal. How would I know what normal church sounds like? Well, I don't, but it sounds really, really scary. And if you're in McClellanville, there's no reason it's right near downtown McClellanville to stop and take a look at this church. It's actually quite an architectural structure. And to add the fact that if you go there in the early evening, maybe later on in the evening, or even if you have the courage to go there at night, you might want to bring a camera or something to take a picture of that ghost that you will probably meet. Now the best part about it is, these are generally very friendly southerners. So more than likely, the ghost would greet you and treat you very well. Why? They're Southerners. Of course, they're going to be ghosts, but they're going to be extremely friendly and polite ghosts. And so for flip side of America, we have to say this is one ghost story that may scare us, but it may also make us feel right at home, located in the deep south and the history of McClellanville. Hey, that was pretty scary, but you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid to save money. This guy's going to tell you how to save money at tosavebig.com. That's tosavebig.com. Take it away. Tell these people how to save some money. Yes, it's tosavebig.com. That's tosavebig.com. How do you get there? 
Go to tosaybig.com or the easy way is geodigitalbroadcasting.com and you can click on tosaybig.com. What does tosaybig.com have? Well, right now we have some swimming specials. You own a pool? Own a spa? We have some great deals for people in the swim. For the traveler, we have several options for somebody looking to travel. We have Priceline right now that we have a great discount service going on with Priceline. We also have some great deals going on with LookUpFair.com and also we have some great deals on Cheapo Air. You need a good deal on airfare? Come to TooBigSave.com. Next, we also have a great deal on iSmart Safe. What is iSmart Safe? Well, iSmart Safe is a home security system. It's a do it yourself home security system where you can simply put in the type of system that you want and there is no monthly fee. And the great part about it is we've got a nice coupon that goes with that. To save big.com. You need to save big? You want to save money? Then come to to save big.com. As we said, some things are scary, some things aren't. Don't forget, one of the things that isn't scary is going to Rent Fun USA. That's rentfunusa.com. Also, our website, you can get there by our website, which is geodigitalbroadcasting.com or tgdbn.com. At tgdbn.com or geodigital broadcasting, which we are part of the geodigital broadcasting family. Um, you can watch past shows, you can see the current show, and you can uh, get to um, rentfunusa.com. Um, you can also tosavebig.com, a place you can get coupons and, and save. There, there are websites there for you to save money, uh, once again, on travel and a variety of different things. Swimsuits, swimming uh, gear, all that is available to you at tosavebig.com. Now, I do want to take the time to thank everybody for watching today. And also, we are getting in videos. You will see some videos. We're just trying to get through all the videos that we're getting. Also, please, please, please don't forget to register to win. We've got some prizes. There's going to be new prizes all the time. We may put in prizes just on the website. Don't forget, we're going to have prizes that might just be on the website only. And they'll give you an opportunity, once again, to register to win those prizes as well. We enjoy you being with us. Hey, if we see you out on the street, don't forget to say hi. And thank you again. We'll see you next time.